Okay, so wow, my first One Piece chapter review, and it's on one of the most important chapters ever. A chapter that gives so much, yet so little. Now, I left this chapter hype and confused at the same time, with more questions than answers. So the results of the reverie have come to light, and with some severe repercussions for the world of One Piece. So starting off, after escorting Neptune and Shirahoshi back to Riku Kingdom, he lets Garp lets them know that this was a bad reverie year, and while they were on their way back, some stuff popped off involving Alabasta. Now before I move on, I just want to bring up that back at the reverie, uh, Fujitora had given Cobra a letter, resulting in Cobra having a little meeting with Fujitora and King Riku. Now afterward, Cobra had requested a meeting with the Gorosei, who were concerned that he may have discovered something and would possibly cause trouble. Now they considered the Nefertari bloodline traitors since they were the only one of the original 20 families to remain in the lower realm. Also significant is the fact that Emu was shown staring at a picture of Vivi right before the Gorosei asked which light he or she would be requesting to extinguish from history this time. Now I'm going to circle back to that a little bit later. So next up, we had a government official who was apparently Cypherpole attempting to bribe Big News Morgans in order to suppress the information of what went down in the reverie. One of the highlights of this chapter for me was Morgans putting the feathers to Buddy from Cypherpole and knocking him the fuck out. That is some quality content right there. In addition to this, we also find out that Wapol is feeding information to Morgans. This is where a bombshell is dropped or what Oda wants to be perceived as a bombshell. We see several different people reacting to news of Sabo's death or that's what Oda would like us to believe. Communication has been lost between the revolutionary army commanders and HQ. That's obvious. The news is about their supposed deaths because Blackbeard is shown reacting to the news and he's gathering his crew getting ready to head out to sea in order to retrieve the devil fruits of the dead commanders. Now next up we get an update on Kobe who has been promoted to Rear Admiral, meaning his strength is progressing very quickly and nicely. He is speaking with X-Drake, who is revealed to be a double agent, a member of a top secret Marine faction known as Sword, and Kobe is also a member. Now, this is evident that Sword may be comprised of the non-shitty Marines, and Drake informed Kobe that he saw CP0 in the capital. The day he was speaking of was most likely the day that Yasui was executed in the capital, meaning the world government is indeed in bed with Kaido in some fashion. Now, the biggest piece of news to come from the entire reverie was the abolishing of the Shichibukai system. Cobra and Riku were the ones to bring it up due to their countries being bodied by former Shichibukai, and after much argument, the decision was made and we see the immediate results. The first being Buggy D Clown being caught off guard and planning his cowardly escape. The second being Mihawk, who was absolutely about to wash the entire fleet sent to take his head. And Weevil and Hancock are also preparing to do battle. So much in one chapter, so much info just dumped on the reader and I love it. So first, let's talk about the Shichibukai being disbanded, right? We have to remember that back in the Reverie, Fujitora was speaking with uh, Ryugyuku about something that Vegapunk had created that would result in the Shichibukai no longer being needed. He of course obviously had a plan since he most likely gave the same letter to Cobra and Riku detailing what this creation was and he knew due to their history with Shichibukai in their respective kingdoms, they would be the perfect two to bring the matter up at the reverie. What this creation is, I have not a single clue, but I would love to know. Now based on using context clues, we can assume that the discussion surrounding the Shichibukai accord occurred before whatever happened involving the Nefertari family. With the reverie being such a tight gathering, I believe that whatever happened to the commanders of the Revolutionary Army may be linked with what happened to the Nefertaris. Now, first of all, before departing for the reverie, Sabo had a conversation with Dragon mentioning that what would happen would be their declaration of war. And we also have to take into account, once again, the Emu and Vivi situation with her appearing to be some sort of sacrifice. What could have happened is that Sabo and his crew got caught in the mix of that, attempting to save Vivi and ruining whatever plans they initially had, causing some sort of scuffle. Now here's where I'm confused though. It's hard for me to believe that Oda would kill Sabo off screen as well as four other characters who had an entire chapter dedicated to their introduction and that was it. However, Big News Morgans was refusing to publish any lies in his paper in regards to the reverie, so Sabo's death may be the truth, or 
Whatever news Waffle had to report to Big News Morgans could have been some sort of update on that crew, like they were captured and made to believe dead to draw out the Revolutionary Army. I'm not sure, but that was the most brain racking part of the chapter for me. Then we have CP0 and Wano. Now they travel really fucking fast because they were also at the Reverie. So is it other members of CP0 we haven't seen? Or is it just a couple of them like Rob and Kaku? What's going on with that? I can't wait to find out because that will also most likely play some role in the upcoming battle in Wano. Now Wano arc as a whole, it feels like it's drawing to a close within the next like 20 chapters or less. So dropping these bombs now feels like perfect setup for the big war that's on the horizon and now that the Shichibukai are now enemies of the government once again all bets are off so we have we also have one Yonko Blackbeard heading to go pick up what he believes to be the devil fruits of dead men two Yonko Kaido and Big Mom teaming up temporarily and Shanks still shrouded into mystery after his meeting with the Gorosei back at the reverie the world of One Piece is shaking the fuck up and I could not be more excited and I'm looking forward to more chapter discussions going forward. So what did you guys think of the chapter? Did you guys have any theories you would like to share? Let me know and let's discuss down below. But as always, follow me on all my socials, at Roshi, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter for the fastest updates. Check out the merch store, the link to that is down below and also consider becoming a patron. I'd greatly appreciate it, but that's all I got for you guys today. Hope you have a great day and I'll catch you guys next time.